better. That's better. Oh, look at Betty. Oh, God, to be young and beautiful. If I could go back to when I was 18, I didn't know anything about anything. I'd give myself a bit of advice. I would say, take better care of your teeth and f a lot more. Oh, no, no, that's very good advice. Pretty baby of This is Michael Faulkner, and it is showtime at the December 5th, 2017 edition of the Weekly Patio Plex. Brought to you on the Chronicrift Network. Starting with the box office reports, everything is as we expected, and despite some good performances, none of the newbies quite made the grade. At number 10 is A Bad Mom's Christmas, down two from eighth. At number nine is The Star, down two from seventh. At eighth is Lady Bird, up three from 11th with 400 new screens. In 7th is three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, up three from 10th with 800 new screens. And capping the bottom five at 6th is Murder on the Orient Express, holding position from last week. The top five this week are right where we left them last week. They begin with Daddy's Home 2 and $7.6 million, added to a total of $82.9 million. In 4th place is 4 Ragnarok, adding $9.9 million to a total of $291.6 million. In third place is Wonder, earning $12.1 million for a total of $87.7 million. In second is Justice League, adding $16.7 million for a total of $197.4 million. And maintaining first this week, as expected, is Coco, adding $27.5 million for a total of $110.1 million. There's really not much more to say about the box office. To close out the box office report, let's take a look at the past. Five years ago in 2012, Skyfall took number one for a final week with $10.8 million. Skyfall reclaimed number one after its fifth weekend in release, and it also became the first film since How to Train Your Dragon to take the top spot in its fifth weekend. Ten years ago in 2007, The Golden Compass won the weekend with $25.8 million. Twenty years ago in 1997, Flubber was the winner for a second week with $11.3 million. 30 years ago in 1987, Three Men and a Baby took the title with $8.4 million. And 40 years ago in 1977, The Goodbye Girl won the box office crown with $5.3 million. The box office premieres for December 8th are trying to get what they can out of Coco before the Jedi arrives. This week's headliner is The Shape of Water, a drama thriller starring Sally Hawkins, Octavia Spencer, and Michael Shannon. How was your trip? Fine. Who's security? Just one moment, please. Security. Who's security? Welcome to the Chief Force, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am Fleming, head of security. And if there are any questions you have or concerns, you can see them on the This is an otherworldly fairy tale set against the backdrop of Cold War era America, circa 1962. In the hidden, high security government laboratory where she works, lonely Elisa is trapped in a life of isolation. Elisa's life is changed forever when she and co worker Zelda discover a secret classified experiment. The Shape of Water is rated R. The other title is Just Getting Started a comedy starring Glenn Headley. 
Morgan Freeman, and Tommy Lee Jones. Villa Capri is not big enough for both of us, Leo. If you want to do something about that, I'll beat you best of five at anything ever invented. Game room. One hour. <laughs> I wonder if you could lift me like that. Oh. Don't go there. What do you mean, don't go there? Yeah, mama said don't go there last night. Ah! Checkmate! You don't got it. All right, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Take it. It's a story about an ex-FBI agent and an ex-mob lawyer in the witness protection program having to put aside their petty rivalry on the golf course to fend off a mob hit. Just Getting Started is rated PG-13. There are also three titles on this week's limited slate, and you can find those in the show notes. Next up is a look at the home entertainment slate for the week of December 5th, and I'll begin newly on DVD and Blu-ray, and that list has one title, and that one is Despicable Me 3, a comedy starring Steve Carell, Miranda Cosgrove, and Trey Parker. Gru and Lucy team up to defeat a new supervillain named Balthazar Bratt, an 80s childhood star. Despicable Me 3 is rated PG. Swinging by newly sun digital video, there's also one title there, and that one is Stronger, a biographical drama starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Tatiana Maslany, and Clancy Brown. A victim of the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013 helps the police track down the killers while struggling to recover from devastating trauma. Stronger is rated R. Moving right along to TV on DVD and Blue, where we start things there with The Simpsons, season 18 from 2006, starring Dan Castaneda, Nancy Cartwright, and Julie Kavner. Season 18 was a historic one, the last before The Simpsons movie, the season finale 400th episode, You Can't Always Get What You Want, 24 Minutes with guest star Kiefer Sutherland, Treehouse of Horror 27 with the sepia tone classic, the Day the Earth Looks Stupid, and much, much more. Guest stars this season included Michael Imperioli, The White Stripes, Tom Wolfe and Natalie Portman, and classic episodes include the Emmy-nominated The Ha Hod Couple and WGA winner Kill Gill Volumes 1 and 2. Now, a while back, Fox announced that The Simpsons would no longer be released on home media because they were going to an all-streaming platform, which I thought would be a little less expensive. It seems that public outcry has won the day with season 18. And you know, if enough people show up to buy this set, <laughs> there may be more on the horizon. If you like The Simpsons, get out there and support your show. The second TV title is Fargo, Season 3 from 2017, starring Ewan McGregor, Carrie Coon, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Set in 2010, Chapter 3 centers on Emmett, the parking lot king of Minnesota, and his younger brother Ray Stussy, a pot-bellied parole officer with a huge chip on his shoulder about the hand he's been dealt, and he blames his brother. Their sibling rivalry follows a twisted path that begins with petty theft, but soon leads to murder, mobsters, and cutthroat competitive bridge. The final TV title this week is Twin Peaks Season 3, a limited event series from 2017, starring Kyle MacLachlan, Madchen Emick, and Ray Wise. The blurb is pretty short because, really, how do you describe the phenomenon that is Twin Peaks? 
This limited season picks up 25 years after the inhabitants of a quaint northwestern town are stunned when their homecoming queen is murdered. I'll wrap up the Home Entertainment Slate with Blue Race from the past, and this week there's one title. That one is Silent Night, Deadly Night, a horror thriller from 1984, which <laughs> thankfully this week is actually Christmas-related, starring Lila Chauvin, Gilmer McCormick, and Tony Nero. After his parents are murdered, a young, tormented teenager goes on a murderous rampage dressed as Santa due to his stay at an orphanage where he was abused by Mother Superior. It's a pretty safe bet to say that Silent Night, Deadly Night is rated R. After this brief break for about a shameless podcast cross-promotion, the Weekly Podioplex will continue. My name is Justin McCumber. I'm the creator and one of the co-hosts for the Dead Robots Society podcast. Every week we discuss a variety of topics that are fundamental to the craft of writing. From the differences between tone and theme, to world building, to how to create compelling antagonists. Along with the roundtable discussions, we've also had the pleasure of interviewing published authors, television writers, podcast luminaries, publishing house founders, and magazine editors. We're dedicated to our listeners, and we work hard to pack our episodes with as much quality education and entertainment as possible. We never stop encouraging ourselves and our listeners to always be writing and to always be improving. The promised land of publication is our goal, and we know that together we can achieve it. If we can also have a good laugh along the way, all the better. You can find us online at www.deadrobotssociety.com. At our website, you'll find show notes, links to our personal sites, our email address, and direct download links to our episodes. You'll also find a link to our forums where we've created a private critique group so that you can safely post your work and get comments and suggestions from us as well as our listeners. All we ask is that you participate by critiquing in return. So come to our site, subscribe to our show, and join us. You can also find us at iTunes. Just search for Dead Robots and we'll be there. After that, get writing. We are... Welcome back to the Weekly Podioplex. I'm Denise with your Quick Flicks. In news of the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot caliber... Quentin Tarantino is developing a Star Trek movie and may direct it to boot. Kay. The creator of Pulp Fiction and Kill Bill is developing a new Star Trek movie for Paramount alongside J.J. Abrams. Deadline is reporting Tarantino recently pitched an idea for a new Star Trek film to Abrams and Paramount, and it was very well received. Paramount is now looking to assemble a writer's room to flesh out Tarantino's idea, and if all things are going according to plan, Abrams will stick around as producer and lens flair extraordinaire. And, depending on the rest of the development process and his schedule, Tarantino could direct the film. I'm sorry to say that because the film is so early in development, there is no word if it will be a continuation of Abrams' franchise, or if we're going to see something entirely new. It could be that Tarantino doesn't want to worry about something so pesky as continuity, so we may get a one-off, but with Abrams on board, it could be that the pendulum will swing the other way and we'll get an interesting addition to the new Star Trek universe. In more Star Trek news, Nicholas Meyer, Wrath of Khan director, has confirmed that he is actively working on a new Star Trek project in addition to Star Trek Discovery. He is playing every little detail close to the chest, however, so we have absolutely no idea what the Wrath of Khan director's new project is. Over on the other side of the galaxy, it looks like Rian Johnson's Star Wars trilogy won't adapt Knights of the Old Republic. Okay, is anyone else thinking that the new trilogy is going to be a giant fanfiction a la what the extended universe was before Disney shut it down? Or is it just me? Fans hoping that Rian Johnson's standalone Star Wars trilogy will adapt the storyline from Knights of the Old Republic must break out their drink of choice and wallow in it, because it ain't gonna happen. Johnson has confirmed he will not adapt the beloved game with his new set of movies, because he hates us. For those who don't know, Knights of the Old Republic takes place thousands of years before the Skywalker Saga. 
As the name suggests, the game is set in the time period of the Old Republic, when war between Jedi and Sith ran rampant. It's a massive war, it's got a lot of moving parts and mythology, but the story is relatively simple of two feuding Sith Lords and, depending on the player's choices, redemption. It's a great game, you should go play it. Rian Johnson has no interest in telling that story, however, but he hasn't exactly sworn off the Old Republic as a setting for his trilogy. In an interview with Mashable, Johnson was asked to talk about the hopes and rumors that he would adapt Knights of the Old Republic. While he has remained mostly tight-lipped about his trilogy, he was quick to smash the adaptation theory into itty-bitty pieces. He said, Oh, the fans love Knights of the Old Republic. I played that game when it first came out, and it was like, God, I loved it. Yeah, that's a fantastic game, and I understand it, the instinct to automatically go to something that you know and love, that you've already seen. To me, what's really fun is the notion of what new stuff are we going to see, what new stories can we tell. Kudos to him for wanting to tell a completely new story, but if the trilogy isn't going to be Knights of the Old Republic, what is it going to be about? Well, apparently it isn't going to be connected to the current Star Wars at all. Johnson said he has no limitations when it comes to conceiving his new trilogy of films. Speaking exclusively to Screen Rant, Johnson reiterated that the new trilogy will be entirely unconnected from the current trilogy of films. When asked if they would in any way jump off from Star Wars 9, which will be directed by J.J. Abrams, Johnson clarified that no, no it will not. He said, well, no, so he's going to do the next episode, so do the final chapter of this trilogy, and then I'm just completely separately going to be coming up with a whole new trilogy that won't be connected to this at all. I'm just going to come up with something new and do it. Honestly, I'm all for it. Sure, the vehicle is the same, but Hollywood is in desperate need of some new stories. The Star Wars universe isn't exactly a bad place to start. Jumping out of the starship, we're going back to Earth to say that Brian Singer has been fired from Queen Biopic Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh no! 20th Century Fox has officially canned Brian Singer. Production on the movie, which features Mr. Robot star Rami Malek in the role of Freddie Mercury, was halted this past week after Singer failed to return the Bohemian Rhapsody set following a break in filming for the Thanksgiving holiday. Singer's representative eventually released a statement claiming that his absence was due to a personal health matter but did not elaborate. Shortly after the news of unexpected absence, it emerged that Singer had repeatedly clashed with Malek during production. This wasn't the first time the director vanished during the middle of principal photography on a major studio production, having previously done the same thing on Superman Returns and X-Men Apocalypse. And that partly accounts for why Fox has decided to pink slip him. It is now being reported that this isn't the first time that Singer has failed to check into the Bohemian Rhapsody set either, having done it multiple times in the past and forced cinematographer Thomas Newton Seigel to step in and take the helm. In addition to Malek having complained to Fox about Singer's general unreliability and unprofessionalism, THR reports that Tom Hollander, who plays Queen manager Jim Beach in the film, even quit the production over Singer's behavior before he was eventually persuaded to return. THR insiders report that Singer was warned by Fox Film Chairman CEO Stacey Snyder and Vice Chairman President of Production Emma Watts that any unprofessional behavior on his part would not be tolerated prior to the start of principal photography on Bohemian Rhapsody, which now only has two weeks left. Fox even had a Directors Guild of America representative on set to keep Singer in line. Singer himself claimed he was suffering from PTSD brought on by the tensions of the film set prior to his final departure. He has released a statement saying, I wanted nothing more than to be able to finish this project and help honor the legacy of Freddie Mercury and Queen, but Fox would not permit me to do so because I needed to temporarily put my health and the health of my loved ones first. Bohemian Rhapsody is a passion project of mine. With fewer than three weeks to shoot remaining, I asked Fox for some time off so I could return to the U.S. to deal with pressing health matters concerning one of my parents. This was a very taxing experience, which ultimately took a serious toll on my own health. Unfortunately, the studio was unwilling to accommodate me and terminated my services. This was not my decision and was beyond my control. There is no word yet on whether Fox has any plans to push the film's theatrical release date back. And finally, Netflix has confirmed that House of Cards Season 6 is still happening. After months of speculation and more behind-the-scenes politics than probably would have made a show unto itself, Netflix is bringing the show back. Woo! This has everything to do with the accusations currently rocking Hollywood. Kevin Spacey was one of the accused and summarily fired. It was later announced that the series would continue without Spacey, but that it would remain on an indefinite hiatus. The crew and fans had hoped that production would resume soon, and voila! Speaking at UBS's Global Media and Communications Conference in New York, Chief Content Officer Ted Sarandos confirmed that the show is coming back, saying, I can actually give you some news in the room today because we have been in an arrangement to produce a sixth season of House of Cards. It will be an eight-episode season that'll start production early 18, and it will not involve Kevin Spacey. It will star Robin Wright, and we're really excited about bringing some closure to the show for fans. Patience is a virtue, y'all, and with Robin Wright at the helm, virtue will be greatly rewarded. 
And that's it for this week's Quick Flicks. I'll see you guys next time on the Weekly Potioplex. Thank you, Denise. And here we are once again at the end of the new edition of the Weekly Potioplex. If you want to discuss anything you heard on this week's edition, we would love to hear from you. You can surf on over to the Chronic Rift homepage at chronicrift.com and leave an audio message right there on the website using a microphone. You can also write an email or send an mp3 to weeklypodioplex at gmail.com. If short form is more your thing, you can still tweet us on Twitter. The Chronic Rift is chronic underscore rift. The Weekly Podioplex is Weekly Podioplex. Denise is Riley James Keith. And I am Womprat99, like the creature Luke of Bulls on his T16 in Beggar's Canyon. You can give the Chronic Rift a thumbs up on Stitcher Radio, leave us a review on iTunes, and you can find the Weekly Podioplex and the Chronic Rift on Facebook. The usual disclaimer applies, of course, if you leave us feedback. You may hear your words on a future edition of the Weekly Podioplex. Take a moment, stop on by, and see what other shows the Chronic Rift Network has to offer. We have the Batcave Podcast, the OSI Files Podcast, the G2V Podcast, Generations Geek, Present the Transcription Feature, the Dan and Travis Show, the Sci-Fi Nutter Podcast, Doctor Who and Mr. Drew, the Home Game Show Version Podcast, and so much more. If you have a Roku player, you can treat it like a time machine and find us there on the Chronicrift's Roku channel, which has episodes of the Chronicrift's Adventures in the 1990s, when it was a public access television show on the New York City airwaves. Check us out and find the culture in pop culture. If you're interested in more of my adventures, take a quick trip to my blog, Creative Criticality, where I'm watching every episode of Doctor Who for the first time from the very beginning of the franchise and reviewing those stories in the Timestamps Project. Right now, the blog is, well, I guess you could call it the middle of the 21st season. I'm just about ready to publish The Caves of Androzani, which is the final story with the fifth Doctor. And those reviews can be found at creativecriticality.wordpress.com. You can also find Creative Criticality on Facebook. Denise can also be found on the internet at Accessories Not Included, where she talks about her writing, reviews books, and offers her services as a cover designer. Check her out at accessoriesnotincluded.com. If you decide to pick up any of this week's new releases, why not do it through our Amazon store? You get the newest entertainment at Amazon's low prices and high quality service, and each purchase you make at that store supports the Chronic Rift Network. Your support keeps us on the air, and we appreciate your consideration. Look for the links to our best bets and the network store in our show notes, or click the Amazon box on the website. The Weekly Potty Uplex is a Lucky Shot production and is produced by John S. Drew. On behalf of Denise and John, this is Michael Faulkner. Thanks for listening. Until next time, their adventures and drama, comedy and action, worlds to explore in the depths of film. Get some popcorn, find your favorite seat, and enjoy the next week, because The Last Jedi comes soon. <laughs> <laughs>